G'day, I'm Gavin from Hurley's Fly Fishing and welcome to another episode of On The Fly. Today we're uh, fishing up in northeast Victoria on a lovely little stream flowing through the mountains. The river follows the road for quite a few miles so access is not too bad. There's a little bit of uh, log jumping from time to time but the rewards are there with some of the fish in here really eager to take a fly. As you can see, fire ravaged this area a few years ago, but the regeneration is incredible and the fishing's been outstanding since. Now it is a lovely little river, but it does have some challenges, notably all these fallen logs. And as we go upstream, we're gonna encounter a few. So it's probably not the river to tackle when you turn an 85. Young and energetic or stupid, perfect for you. We'll find plenty of pools on either side of these logs and hopefully that'll hold the fish that'll take our dry. Beautiful little run here. I'm just gonna run the, uh, the dry through. Good bit of flow, depth, oxygen. If we were a trout, we'd live here. So we fished it pretty thoroughly with the dry and uh, nothing has come up to eat it, which is a bit sad. But what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put on um, a nymph underneath. I'll probably give it, because a bit of flow here, maybe about four feet with a, a little nymph there. Sometimes if it's too hot, they'll stay right down deep. Still want to feed, but with a nymph on there, we might have a bit more chance of uh, getting connected. Beauty. And that was the, whoa, little rainbow. The difference. There you go. They, uh, rainbows tend to give you a bit more curry. Oh, and he's off downstream and uh, jumping. And I've sort of been able to subdue him a little bit in that current. But we'll get him up here a little bit to see if we can't get him in the net. Come on, mate. And we've hooked up the dry fly on the net. So that was lucky, that worked out okay. The dry fly had been entangled because we got him on the nymph. But what we've done there, we fished that pretty thoroughly with a dry fly. And the fish are still there and they're still eager to feed, but they need something right in front of them. So he's probably right down deep where all the, um, the cold water is, maybe behind a rock. And we've got that nymph down deep in front of him and he's gone, I might as well have it. So um, it pays to change things up. If something's not working, don't continue to do it. So we could have fished a dry fly there for another hour and a half and not got anything. But we swapped to a nymph and it's brought results relatively quickly. So uh, yeah, pretty ideal. And you know, with a rainbow too, they're pretty aggressive. Uh, once they take the fly too, they don't like it much. So a good bit of fun there on light gear. On a, we've got a stalker legend and a two weight, which is ideal for shorter casts like this. It's still quite a fast action. So you can um, pinpoint where you want your flies to go and put it in there and when it works, just makes it a hell of a lot more fun. Beautiful little uh, rainbow there. You can tell the, uh, there's a mixture of browns and rainbows. You can see their huge big red stripe when I bring them into the sun. And the red around the gills. And they'll also have a lot of spots on their tail, whereas browns won't. Browns will have more of a, uh, no pattern on the tail and just some lovely little red spots. These rainbows are generally more aggressive and that's a beautiful little fish. He's probably on a pound, so a lovely little fish there. And what we want to do now, because we've given him a bit of a fright, we just, yeah, there you go, till he's good enough and confident enough to, to swim off. And he's uh, just ducked back into some fast flying water, get his um, uh, bit of breath back through all that oxygenated water. 
and he'll be good to feed again maybe tomorrow so uh, it's pretty good here you can catch a lot of fish in these small streams so you really want to be looking after it and protecting it and putting him back for somebody else to have that same enjoyment that I just got then. I think it's worth a couple more casts as well. You never know what's in that pool. We will run uh, the fly <clears throat> through similar water. I mean, we've seen it often enough where we pull a fish out of one particular lie and once we land him, do another cast and there's another fish takes up its place. So it might just be a good feeding area, and this looks to be, so uh, we'll just have a couple of casts through that same area. One more cast, you always got to have that one lucky last cast. Sometimes two. And move on. You never know what's around the next bend. Short little run here, but could certainly hold a fish. And we'll know in a couple of casts. Oh, that might have been. Oh, it was a little fish. I reckon he was probably that big that just took the nymph <laughs> and struck. At least he let go, otherwise he might have been up in that tree as well. But even small fish will have a crack at a, uh, a little nymph there. But we want his grandfather, unfortunately. Little pool on the other side of this log. A couple of casts should do it. Yep. Oh, there we go. Well, one cast. And it uh, looks to be a little rainbow that I have got myself a predicament, but we might air him over. <laughs> and there we go. And sometimes that's what it's like as well. You just see that short little pool. We'll give you a look at that once we uh, come up with the camera. But all it takes, these fish have got to be um, pretty opportunistic. They don't have Uber Eats or anything like that, so if there's a little bit of tucker on offer, they've got to snap it up before the little, little mate behind them gets it. Who knows when that next bit of food's going to be uh, coming by, so they've really got to be on, on their lookout for anything on the top or on the bottom, and a lovely little rainbow. So that's ideal, and that's what it's like And a lot of these smaller waters. One little short cast might only drift for a foot or two, and that's enough time for, for little fish like that to go bang, I'm going to eat that before it's gone. Faster water, you can often get away with a much bigger fly. I love the rubber leg stimulators because it imitates so many different um, food items that, that trout eat. So I love it up here because they've got to make that snap decision. And that's worked well up there. So uh, any little bit of uh, pocket water, put a fly in it. You never know what might get on the end of your line. This is the pool we just got that little rainbow out of short little cast up to near the head of the pool let it drift back and he smacked it about here um, so you literally only got a couple of feet of drift but that's all you need so a quick little cast as you're walking upstream can produce results right, we've got a nice little pool here worth a couple of casts and we'll know soon enough where there where there's a fish in it and sure enough there was and a, a lovely little little What's this one? We've got a, uh, I don't muck around too much with him. Little rainbow again. But they all count. Um, you can just sort of see how fast they are to react. Because they've got to make that decision pretty quickly. And he's good to go, but that's what it's like. Still counts as a, uh, a trout. You know, you get back home and tell your mates, yeah, I've got five, I've got seven, I've got 30. Yeah, don't worry about the size, that's uh, unimportant. But uh, nice little run like that, and there still could be a couple more fish up there, so it's worth a cast as well. But uh, the rainbows are generally a little bit less cautious, and they're tending to smack the dry at the moment, which is good. So um, I'll have a couple more goes with the, the nymph on it as well, and if that uh, doesn't 
pay any dividends, we'll give it the fleck and go back to just the dry. Couple on the left side here. There we go. Yep, beauty. And <laughs> sometimes you just need, oh, and it just got off. Little rainbow again. But sometimes you need that fly just in new water. So we'd worked our way through that main current. And then sure enough, one cast over there on the, the left hand side, that's enough for another fish to hold, not know anything about um, the fish we caught previously. And bang, as soon as they see it, they're onto it. Now that's what we've got ahead of us. So as I said, it's not for the faint hearted little rivers like this but the rewards are there. Just push through, not in any hurry, and there could be a, a fish in every pool leading up to every log all the way up that stream. Short little pool here. Oh, there you go. Now this, is again size doesn't matter lovely little rainbow just very eager to take that fly now it is really important uh, in today's day and age with the sun as it is to really cover up i always wear like our stalker flex fit shirt really nice and comfy and stretches with you as well i'm a big fan of gloves now just the back of your hand we all tend to forget about but having these flexi fit gloves with a, a lovely leather palm there, makes them last and keep the sun off. I also wear our, our new FlexFit buff, ideal to pull over and stop a lot of that um, sun because you do get reflection off the water as well. Also with our, our riverside hat, wide brim protects the ears and just keeps the sun at bay for as long as possible. So we need to look after ourselves a bit more as we're spending more time out in the elements. Look after yourself and I'll look after you. So a wading stick makes a great difference, not just on rocks, but even uh, tackling some of these fallen trees. Just that extra bit of stability can make all the difference. Got a great little run here, and there literally could be fish spread out throughout. Good oxygenated water tumbling down there pretty well. A lot of uh, rocks in the way creating deflections of water so they can sit behind that, dart out, get the food and back. So I'm going to start on this side, a few casts either, either side of that rock. And as you've seen, a lot of these fish, if they see this fly, bang, they grab it straight away. So you don't need too many casts unless you're certain there's a fish there. So a few on that side and then over on the right hand side there's a bit more depth as well. So we'll certainly have a few casts there. But work your way methodically and you could pull a few fish out. From there and move on a bit. Oh, could just see one just under the surface. The fly had sunk a little bit, and I could see the rosy red cheeks of a rainbow grab it while it was underwater. Struck a little bit, just uh, got him in the gob enough to annoy him and uh, yeah, frighten the G's out of him for a little bit, but. Still a take, still a take. Yep. I mean, it's a great day for, for spotting fish with the sun like that, but I think you do need good set of polarized glasses. And I wear the tonic uh, and I have to get them in prescription, but I think they're absolutely fantastic for uh, spotting fish. And I could see that uh, fish before he'd taken the fly and you watch him swim over and you can almost see what he's thinking and he's thinking I'm gonna eat that and sure enough did and I guess you've got to be in, in rivers like this it's a really fast take so you have a, a relatively fast strike as well so you don't give them time to spit it out so uh, 
having seen the preempt that this guy is going to take it, you're ready. Like a, um, a mouse trap. As soon as he takes it, you can whack that fly and bring him undone. But a beautiful little fish again. Little rainbow, and that's what they've, they've been today. Nice and aggressive. Just a great little fish. Big red stripe down the side, rosy red cheeks. And uh, certainly makes for one happy little fly fisherman. We'll just get that out and let him on his way. So that's pretty good. So we've had two takes in this little area here, both near the, uh, the tops of the pool there. And there could still, still well be a few more. So keep prospecting. It's very hard to see fish because they're not big enough and because it's quite a motley bottom at times. So uh, I'm going to put a, as many good casts in the right areas as possible and uh, eventually you'll get a few. There we go. I, uh, I couldn't help myself. I'm just walking up the river, having a, a couple of casts and uh, we, we actually turned off the camera. But just that little pocket water just um, in front of that log there is all it takes to hold this fish and have enough food being brought down to keep him pretty happy. And again, rainbows, they're really thick at the moment. They love this faster water as opposed to a browns, perhaps like slower, cooler water. The uh, rainbows certainly like this oxygenated water. So a great little fish. We might have missed the take there, but that's okay. All good fun. They're all going back anyway. So they're just great fun to, to walk up a river. And it is a little bit hard going at times, but it's not for everyone. And that's why I really enjoy it. Walking up a river, you've got just a dry fly on now. Casting, prospecting, seeing that head jump out and grab it. Just makes it all worthwhile. But on this fast water, I do like to hold the rod and the line up high and out of the water. Because it's moving so fast, um, it's gonna create drag when it picks up all the tension in this fly line and drag your fly across. So all I literally want in that water at the, at the moment as it's drifting down is the leader itself. So I'll cast up, hold the fly line out of the water and allows it to drift much more naturally in the zone. And then the fish like grabs it and then you're all set to strike. So uh, in pocket water like this, short cast, hold that fly line up high and out of the water and you're ready to strike as soon as that fish touches. Nice little cool just up here. We'll bang out a couple of casts and just see. Yep. Oh! Uh, yeah, and sure enough, a little head comes out and grabs it. And that's what it has been like. When the fish are there, first cast, as long as it's in the vicinity, he'll find it. I don't think he'll probably have it again, otherwise just ripped a couple of his teeth out with it, but you never know, we'll try again. No. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. Just when I didn't think we... <laughs> he would take it twice. And... We'll just coax him back to the correct side of the log. And I might just have to lift him up here again. And there you go. Beautiful little fish. And they just love that rubber leg stimulator. We have seen a few of uh, the big caddis getting around, just as he's got off there. And there's also like a, a really big double wing flying insect as well that this would imitate, no, no doubt. So uh, he quite liked it, so that was pretty good. And interesting enough, that would have been the same fish. So he's taken it, ripped out of his mouth, and then he's sort of forgotten about it pretty quick because he's, uh, he's taken the next, the next time he had floated by, he's given that a whack. So that's pretty uh, good for a fly fishing point of view. And rainbows can be like that at times as well. They're uh, a little bit less cautious, say. And uh, yeah, I don't mind, I don't mind one bit. Now we've got to this lovely little pool and we've got to break it up. We've got lovely uh, bubble line on the left hand side, just underneath these trees. And you could also have spiders and things falling in from, from those trees. Really good place for a fish to sit. 
Then we go over to the right where the, the main flow of that water is up against that log. And that will again will also funnel, funnel a lot of the food that these fish love to eat. So we're going to start off short here and then extend a little bit and then work our way to the right. And hopefully there's going to be a fish in there to really cap off our day. Like that one is perfect. And that's exactly what we're hoping for. A lovely little fish. I don't want him to come down here for the minute. But that's ideal. What we're uh, hoping for, when you see a bit of water like that, you've got to come up with a plan. You don't just jump up there and splash about and throw a couple of casts and move on. See a good bit of water. Because you've worked so hard to get to good water over these logs and rocks, you make it count. So we start off short and you might pick up a fish or two and there's a good chance there's going to be another fish further up. So uh, do it systematically and you'll catch a lot more fish. But it's good when a plan comes together and they do as they're told and they react like you'd expect them to. He's actually a little bit of an older fish. His head's a bit bigger, we won't keep him out too long on a nice hot day, but a little bit older and uh, we'll just hold, hold him there, he's, he's good already. And I think that can happen when you use a net because you can subdue them a little bit quicker as well. And uh, it's pretty well oxygenated so they get their breath back pretty quick and they're good to go. So um, I might have a couple of casts here in a minute but might not catch anything either. And really who cares on a day like today to spend it up in northeast Victoria is just incredible. The sight fishing, you know, we're watching these fish regardless of the size, take your fly. You're doing the right things. You're doing the hard yards over logs and, and boulders and getting there, putting your fly in the right spot. It's the right fly, you watch them take it. You, you strike and there's a fish on the end of it. Well, it just makes it all worthwhile. So it's just a fantastic place to spend a bit of time. So if you get the opportunity, get up here. There's heaps of rivers all around the place, you know, whether it be the Rubicon, the Goulburn, you know, some of the smaller streams here are just outstanding as well. So you're going to find lots of places to fish and even come up for a few days. Even though it's an hour and a half, two hours from Melbourne, spend a bit of time up here, you know. So go to the pub, spend some money in the local community and you're going to enjoy yourself as well. So uh, anyway, I think, uh, presuming nothing much more is going to happen on this run, I think we'll end it here and uh, it's that universal time in the world, o'clock. So uh, I think we might need to head off as well. And funny enough, I've got the fridge on in there, so it could be uh, a very refreshing ale on a hot day like this. So I hope you've enjoyed today. It's been great fun bringing it to you. All the, uh, the sweat and tears, well worth it to get these lovely fish. So uh, I'll look forward to catching you on the fly. Now I know I did say I was just gonna go, but I've only got one cast into my systematic fishing of this lovely bull and it's been a hard slog to get here, so we'll just have a, have a couple of casts up here and see if there's a, another fish just waiting to be caught. Yep, and there was. Oh, gee, nice. A little bit bigger than the other ones. Just a little bit more go in it. Oh, great fun, great fun. On this light little gear, this is fantastic. Yeah, and you've really got it convince him that he doesn't want to go in that direction and that's beautiful again absolutely stunning just solid little fish they go like curry and uh, fantastic we might just put him straight back there you go we're a couple of casts into my systematic fishing of this good pool I think I'd at least deserve another cast I mean surely Surely.